In this video, I will explain calculus in less than 10 minutes. What really is calculus? Well, let's put it this way. In this first figure, the man is pushing a box up a straight incline. In this second figure, the man is pushing a box up but this time in a curved incline. In both cases, the question is, how much energy is required to push the box to the top? In a straight incline, the slope of the incline is constant at every point, so the man pushes with an unchanging force, and the box goes up in an unchanging speed. So the energy required can be solved using simple physics formulas, including algebra and trigo, and we can classify this as a regular math problem. For the curving incline, on the other hand, things are constantly changing. As a result, the amount of energy expended is constantly changing. Not just every second, a thousand of a second, but constantly, from one moment to the next. That's what makes it a calculus problem. That is also why calculus is called the study of the rate of change. For the curving incline problem, the physics formulas, the algebra, and trigo, well, they used to stay the same. But unlike the straight incline, which we can solve in a single shot, We've got to break up the curving incline into small chunks and do each chunk separately. And how do we do that? Let's zoom in the curve. Zooming in is what makes calculus. So when we zoom far enough, the small length of the curving incline becomes practically straight. And then you can solve that small chunk, just like the straight incline problem, and each small chunk can be solved the same way. And then you just add up all the chunks. This is the reason why calculus is originally called infinitesimal calculus. The calculus takes a problem that can be done with regular math because things are constantly changing. The changing quantity shows up on a graph as curves and it zooms in on the curve till it becomes straight and then it finishes off the problem with regular math. So to understand calculus as a mathematical concept, we need to know the concept of limits, derivative, and integral. So what is a limit? A limit simply answers the question, what happens to the curve or a function, let's say f of x, as x approaches a certain value, let's say a. And the derivative is just the slope of the curve, f of x, at a certain point on the curve. The derivative of f of x is simply represented by f of prime x. And the integral is just the complete opposite of derivative. If we have f of prime x as a derivative, the integral of f of prime x simply put us back to the original function f of x. Now, let's go back to limits. Let's say limit of x squared minus 16 all over x minus 4 as x approaches 4. Now, if we simply substitute 4 to the given function, we have... So that is 0 over 0. So what is that? So that's indeterminate. Well, it doesn't say that x is equal to 4. So we cannot always substitute directly. It says x will approach 4. So let's try values that are close to 4, left and right. Let's say 3.99. So we have 8. Let's try a closer number from the right. Let's say x is equal to 4.01 so that is also approximately equal to 8 so we can say that 8 is the limit of x squared minus 16 all over x minus 4 as x approaches 4 can we solve this by just plugging in the given value well the answer is yes but we need this procedure first we simplify the function by factoring so we can cancel out the common expressions then we substitute the value. There are problems that we can do simple substitution, but in this problem we cannot, since the curve is not continuous. So it has a gap or what we call a hole. So therefore the limit may or may not exist on the curve. So simply put, the limit will tell us what happens to the curve f of x as x approaches a certain value. Then let's go to derivative. Well, in geometry, we studied that the slope is equal to the rise over run or change of y over change of x. Now, let's visualize derivative. Well, on this curve, 
we have line segment AB drawn using two points on the curve f of x. Well, the slope of the segment AB is constant at every point. Well, since it's just a straight line, right? So, what do we do if we want to know the exact slope, say, at point C? Well, we cannot say that the slope is just equal to the slope of the line segment AB. Since the curve is not a straight line, it's constantly changing. So, what do we do? We just zoom in. So, infinitely far that this little piece of curve becomes straight. Based on this analysis, the slope of the curve f of x at the given point in this example is c. It's just equal to the slope of the line tangent to the point on the curve. Now, what is the relationship between limits and derivatives? So in this figure, we plot the curve y is equal to x squared. Well, let's plot two points in the curve. So this point is x, f of x, and the point changes a certain distance change of x. Therefore, the second point is x plus change in x and function of x plus change in x. So the slope of this line is twice overrun, right? So m is equal to, you have this, change of y, this is f of x plus change in x minus f of x all over the run. So the run is change of x. Now, let's say that we want to find the slope of the curve at this first point. What do we do is we just shrink price over run such that change of x approaches to zero until such time it produces a tangent line to the curve. But we can conclude that the limit that is the rise over run as change in x approaches zero will show the slope of the line tangent to the curve at a certain point and that is what we call the derivative. Let's go to our last concept. The integration. Well, mathematically, integral is just the complete opposite of derivative. So let's, if we have f of prime x as the derivative, the integral of f of prime x simply put us back to the original function f of x. Well, let me explain it using figures. Well, in integration, it's just the process of cutting up an area into tiny sections. Well, figuring out their areas and then adding them up to find the whole area. We have these two figures. The first one is just a simple rectangle. So its area, of course, is just length times width. But we cannot figure in one shot the area of this figure since we don't have a fixed formula for this complex and unusual figure. So what do we do? Again, we zoom in. We can see that it is just composed of regular shapes. Here we can see a trapezoid or a triangle with a rectangle at the bottom. We can get the area by just adding these little pieces. And the process of integration looks like this. So you want to calculate the area of the shaded figure. A boundaries x is equal to a and x is equal to b. We get a vertical rectangular strip and it has a height f of x since it touches the curve f of x at the top, as we can see. And we have the length, it's a little bit of x, say dx. And the area of a rectangle is given by length times width. So we have f of x times dx. Now, this is just the area of that single strip. To find the area of the whole, we need to add all that small strips. That's when we need integral. We conclude that the shaded area is just equal to the integral of f of x dx from a to b. And that's it. I hope that you understand the concept of calculus for this very short period of time.